guys, welcome back. Week four on integrity. Do you guys remember what integrity means? If you said it means being truthful with whatever you say or do, you got it right. Now, right now, it might be super truthful for you to have some bad feelings. We're all stuck in kind of this time that we're not used to, being indoors a lot more, um, not seeing our friends as much, and just being aware that it's different for everybody. Uh, but what we tend to do is we can get lost in those bad feelings. This week, we're gonna talk about ways that we can not get lost in bad feelings because what's really honest about this world is that we have so many blessings around us that even though we may focus on the bad things, if we choose to focus on the good things, those bad things seem a lot easier to overcome. So let's go ahead and check in on this week's lesson, and then we'll meet back here for prayer. I'm gonna do really bad today. I'm gonna forget what I have to say. I might as well just give up. Hi, I'm Graham and I'm going to fail. Sorry, but I'm just trying to be honest. I'm trying to have integrity. Integrity is choosing to be truthful in whatever you say and do. And the truth is, the speech I have to give later today is going to go badly. I am supposed to talk to a bunch of strangers about different kinds of masks, but every time I give a speech, I get so nervous that everything I want to say comes out wrong. I don't know if this happens to you, but I keep hearing these voices in my head. 
You're not very good at talking to people. When you tell jokes, they stink. Other people are way <laughs> better at this than you. The more I listen to these voices, the more I believe them. So it's probably better if I don't even do the speech today. Can't mess up if I don't try, right? That way you won't be embarrassed. Good point, teddy bear voice. So in today's story, we're learning about how to control what you think. <laughs> like that would be helpful. Wait, would that be helpful? No. I mean, nay. <laughs> Aw, thanks for being honest, weird horse voice. I knew I could count on you. The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 8. Horatio liked to keep track of things in his head. Five kinds of cereal in the cabinet. Seventeen braids on his sister Nala's head. Two voicemail messages left on his parents' landline phone. Oh, seriously, Mom? You are so stuck in the 1990s. Horatio was especially good at keeping track of things that went wrong. Number one, we're out of chocolate frosted sugar bomb cereal. Horatio's mother did not always appreciate his lists. I did not buy that. Your dad bought that. Number two, it is freezing in here. Put on a sweater. Number three, Miss Watson is making us do a group project and they are the worst because everyone else drags me down. Horatio, can you please focus on something positive for once? Just keeping it real. Oh, oh, I know about positive stuff. Miss Christie told us. Horatio's little sister, Nala, began rummaging around in the stacks of random paper on the counter. There is nothing positive about this morning and I'm positive about that. Nala pulled out a scribbled on handout and waved it triumphantly. Philippians 4, 8? Do not read me a coloring sheet. Finally, my brothers and sisters, always think about what is true. Think about what is noble, right, and pure. Mom, make her stop bugging me. No, this is good. Think about what is lovely and worthy of respect. If anything is excellent or worthy of praise, think about those kinds of things. Horatio just glared and checked out the lunch that mom had packed. Is this strawberry jam in my sandwich? You know I only eat apricot jam. Over the next two hours, Horatio counted dozens of annoying things. <coughs> Number one, this bus stinks like dirty socks stuffed with Cheetos. Number two, the classroom door needs some WD-40. Number three, Miss Watson is wearing yellow and I hate yellow. Number four, this pencil is making a giant callus on my finger. Number five, group projects are still the worst. Number six, it's way too hot over here. And to make matters worse, Miss Watson had put Tish James in charge of the group. Ugh. So we get to do a report on Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. I'll write the history and Jordan, you can paint a picture and Horatio, you research stuff about the land and animals around it. Number seven, Tish is super bossy. Oh, and here's a picture of the lighthouse. Tish held up a glossy photograph and Horatio opened his mouth, ready to complain about how boring lighthouses were, but he couldn't do it. Hatteras Lighthouse spiraling into the sunset sky was breathtaking. He could picture walking the beach and waves crashing as the warm light glowed overhead. Ah and Horatio couldn't help hearing an echo of his little sister's voice. Think about what is lovely and worthy of respect. <laughs> there it was, right in front of his face. Horatio found brand new thoughts forming in his brain. Hey, that looks really cool. That's amazing. It was as if a switch had flipped in Horatio's head. After seeing one good thing, he started to see more. Jordan had brought in some paintings he had done. Number one, Jordan, 
You are a really great artist. Ms. Watson helped Horatio solve some tough fractions by drawing a funny sketch. Number two, Ms. Watson is a super creative teacher. Mom had packed homemade cookies and Horatio's lunch. Number three, my mom makes the best chocolate chip cookies on the planet. Who wants to share? By the time Horatio got off the school bus? Number four, Mr. Rob drove us right up to our house because of the rain. He was actually smiling. Mom met them at the door. Hey kids, how was school? At that moment, Nala shook out her wet umbrella all over Horatio. And for a moment, Horatio frowned. Nala braced herself. Uh, sorry. Number five, I have a closet full of dry clothes upstairs. Nala's eyebrows shot way up. What happened to you? Nothing. I just realized I've got some pretty great things to focus on. So your day went okay? Number six. It was positively awesome. Horatio beamed and ran upstairs to change his wet shirt. He had a lot of brand new lists to make up in his head. The Apostle Paul wrote, Finally, my brothers and sisters, always think about what is true. Think about what is noble, right, and pure. Think about what is lovely and worthy of respect. If anything is excellent or worthy of praise, think about those kinds of things. You know what that means? It means you're in charge of what you think about. Maybe you can't control every single thought that enters your brain. Think about fish. You must think about... But... You can control the thoughts that you focus on. No! <laughs> yes, you can. Having integrity doesn't just mean you're honest with other people. It means you're honest with yourself, too. And to do that, you need to try and focus on things that you know are true. Things like, God made you. God forgives you. God loves you. He loves you so much that he sent Jesus to die on a cross for you. And he's big enough to bring Jesus back from the dead. So he's bigger than all of the things that you and I worry about. So the one thing to remember from today is this. Focus on what's true. And if you ever feel like you can't control your thoughts or if the voices inside seem too loud, talk to someone you trust about it. Find someone who will help you stay focused on the truth of God's amazing love for you. You know what? I'm going to choose not to believe the voices that are telling me that I'm not any good. God made me. I am good. And then I'm going to try to give the best speech that I can. Bet you didn't see that coming, did you? No! <laughs> I mean, nope. Yeah, yeah, I thought not. I'll see you around, everybody. I'll be thinking about you. Bye. Once in a while, you cover up an itty bitty lie with a big fat smile. But an itty bitty lie still lying, that's not your style. Put stick to the middle of the path for miles to mile. Maybe you want it real bad, so you'd say, okay. Maybe you make the promise, but then you break. Maybe you didn't learn the words so you fake it And you feel a little low But if instead you move straight ahead Keeping your promises You'll be living straight up If you move too far to the side Then you're gonna get stuck like a little lie, but it's gonna catch up Do what you say you're gonna do You'll be on your way up Instead you're on your way up
You'll be living straight up Maybe you've got a crew And you said we're gonna do the good things that good friends do And everybody's still a good friend who sticks like glue Cause everybody did what they said and everybody was true Maybe you wanted it but you didn't take it Maybe you promised and then you didn't break it Maybe you learned the words so you didn't fake it And now everybody knows But if instead you move straight ahead Keeping your promises Too far to the side, then you're gonna get stuck It might feel like a little lie, but it's gonna catch up Do what you say you're gonna do, you'll be on your way up Said you're on your way up You'll be living straight up If you move too far to the side, then you're gonna get stuck It might feel like a little lie, but it's gonna catch up do what you say you're gonna do, you'll be on your way up Said you're on your way up You can choose to be true Not just to everybody else, but true to you You can choose to be true Not just to everybody else, but true to you True to you All right, guys, so I actually would love to read to you um, a scripture from Philippians. Uh, this is actually a letter that Paul wrote to Philippi when he was imprisoned. Um, Philippi, people in Philippi were sad about this um, and he was trying to comfort them and comfort himself. So this is Philippians 4, 8. Um, Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. And so what he's saying here is that there's going to be hard times, but what we need to focus our minds on are the things that are right, and just, and true. And one, the things that are true is that God loves us. God is always with us. God is always there for us when we're going through hard times. And if we focus on that, we can have joy, joy during those hard times because we know we have a God that is going to take care of us. So let's go ahead and thank him for that right now um, and just help him or ask him to help us as we try to live lives of integrity. Dear God, thank you for giving us so many true, lovely, and excellent things to focus on. We know that you've given us these things, but we have to choose to set our minds on them. Please help us do that. Give us eyes to see the world as you see it, seeing what's good and true no matter what situation we're in. We love you, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. I can't wait to see you guys inside, but we will still be doing all of our outside or online stuff um, on Severn Kids. And if you're not coming in person, check out our virtual small groups. Um, until next week. <laughs>